Hey, thank you, Mario. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the organizers who gave us this wonderful opportunity to present our research work during the pandemic. So thank you very much. And today I would like to share my research experience in studying the manifestation of the three nuclear force in DP reactions. So last week, uh, Philomena has done an excellent job of explaining the motivation behind the need for a DP reaction studies. So thankfully, I don't need to go through this again. Uh, Philomena reminded us about uncertainties associated with theoretical predictions of DP reactions. She divided them into parametrical and model uncertainties. Parametrical uncertainties are those associated with the choice of the parameters within a fixed model. And that's what she was mainly was talking about. Uh, but there also exist model uncertainties and they include all those mechanisms and interactions which are missing in some particular fixed model. Uh, for example, it could be core excitations or anti symmetrization or breakup effect or anything to think of. So what I would like to talk uh, about today is another source of uncertainties, of model uncertainties, uh, which uh, are never discussed within DP reaction theories. It's the three nuclear force. So let me remind you uh, what is the starting point from which the development of the DP reaction theory begin. And the starting point of any uh, reaction theory is many body Hamiltonian. Uh, this is the Hamiltonian which contains the um, interaction between two nucleons. It's a many-body Hamiltonian and the wave function which describes the whole system uh, is a many-body wave function. To find out what is the um, transition amplitude for this particular reaction, we have to project the total many-body wave function onto internal wave functions of um, uh, subsystems of fragments which we detect in the exit channel. So when we do this and do a lot of manipulations, we will end up with the expression uh, for the um, transition amplitude. Uh, the first term of this expression will contain the internal wave functions of the fragments in the initial uh, channel and in the final channel. Then, we have to introduce two auxiliary uh, two body potentials in the channel alpha and beta. Uh, and uh, the distorted wave generated uh, by these auxiliary potentials enter this first term. There will be another term uh, which still contains the total um, many body uh, wave function but is normally always uh, neglected and never discussed at all. It's only the first term which is retained and it is called distorted wave Born approximation, which is widely uh, used to analyze uh, various uh, direct reactions experiments and uh, DP reactions in particular. So the transition operator in this distorted wave Born approximation uh, contains a difference between the interactions uh, between uh, the nucleons in the nuclei in the final channel minus this particular uh, auxiliary potentials. And we, if we make further approximation that uh, this uh, auxiliary potential will cancel the contribution from the interactions of nucleons in B with A, then we end up here with the interactions between nucleons uh, in X and B. So if we have DP reactions, then it will be interaction between uh, transferred neutron and outgoing proton. So the point I would like to make here is that the starting point itself is the uh, many body Hamilton with uh, two body uh, interactions only. However, Already from 1939, the Primakov and Holstein asked themselves, if we 
consider nuclei from the point of view of field theory, can we these field interactions be substituted by two body interactions? And then came to conclusion that the replacement of ILP interactions by two body uh, action at a distance potential is a poor approximation for nuclear problems. The error made is at least of the order of V over C, if one compares the magnitude a term by term of two and three body potentials. So in 1957, Fujita and Miyazawa uh, came up with the idea that the origin of the three and fours is attributed to virtual excitations of a delta resonance when three nuclei interact via a pion exchange. Since that, uh, there were a lot of phenomenological approaches to describe three nuclear force and take it into account in various uh, calculations. It became clear that in order to describe the simplest um, systems uh, like uh, Triton and Helium-3, it is important to take the three nuclear force into account. Without it, it will be simply uh, underbound. Uh, today, the three nuclear force is routinely used in many abanisho calculations. And uh, the most uh, popular choice today is the chiral effective field th theory interactions where this uh, three and force arises naturally uh, starting from a next to next to leading order. Uh, also, uh, the three and force is used to uh, study uh, uh, optical potentials as well. And of course, in the description of the reactions with the within body, body systems. Here is example of the uh, contribution of the three and force uh, for uh, proton neutron scattering at different energies. And <clears throat> one can see that uh, this contribution becomes more important at uh, higher incident en energies, somewhere more than 100 MeV. However, for uh, systems with more than four nucleons, the situation becomes different. And this is because in uh, starting from five body systems, uh, in the low energy uh, scattering uh, region, uh, normally we have some resonances and their positions strongly affect the observables of elastic scattering and reactions. So if we take a nuclear force into account, uh, then uh, of course we can change the positions of resonances and uh, as a result, uh, you can change observables. Here is one example of the scattering of a proton on carbon tail. Uh, these are the calculation from the Lunokorshall model. Uh, plus resonated group method. And you can see calculations without three and fours. And you see that adding three and fours completely change the angular distributions. Here is another uh, example of the calculations of alpha D scattering, uh, calculations with the two and fours only, and adding of the three and fours does change uh, some phase shifts. Here. Okay, what about the DP uh, reactions? First of all, there are only two calculations, uh, ab initial calculations I'm aware of. Uh, these are DP on uh, helium-3 target and lithium-7 target within no crucial uh, no, no model plus resonating group method. Um, yes, uh, but uh, the three and four has not been taken into account yet there. But for the purpose of the analyzing uh, three uh, DP reactions, we do not uh, use ab initial calculations. What we use is distorted wave theory in one version or another. Uh, and the contribution of the three and fours uh, never has been considered there. So what will happen if we add the three and fours to the total um, uh, Hamiltonian and uh, see what will happen in, in terms of the contribution to the DP reaction. So we can do exactly the same thing, uh, project the total um, wave function onto um, uh, the wave function of the 
uh, internal uh, uh, fragments in the final channel. And we come to the following conclusion that the um, transition amplitude for DPR reaction now will have uh, two terms, one of which is uh, looks exactly the same as uh, the uh, transition amplitude um, in the case of the 2N interaction only. And there will be an additional term here, which differs from this one uh, by adding of the, uh, by different uh, transition operator, uh, where we now have the force, uh, be mm, three nuclear force between proton, neutron, and a nucleon within the target. You will need to make summation over all of all of these uh, nucleons. So, what difference does it bring to? Uh, first of all, uh, because the interaction uh, between neutron and proton does not depend on the coordinate of the system, uh, therefore we can make integration of the internal variables of the target first. So, and then we arrive that the uh, 2N term will contain the overlap integral and uh, which is just a function of the separation between neutron and the target. However, the second term contains a different matrix element. It's not only the function of separation between neutron and center of mass of A, but it also depends on the position of the outgoing proton. And if we want to think in terms of the overlap uh, integrals, what we can do, we can insert here uh, the complete set of, uh, set of uh, excited state of the nucleus A. And then we will see that uh, this particular term will have contribution from all possible excited states. So what does it mean that if in the case of a 2N term, we can think of the overlap integral in terms of the spectroscopic factors or asymptotic normalization coefficients, um, then we will have additional contributions uh, which are not factorized within the, in terms of the same spectroscopic amplitudes. So therefore we will be losing the proportionality between the cross sections and the spectroscopic factor of a particular to uh, state we are um, trying to investigate. So this is the difference. Then how big is this term, of course, uh, is the question. And to be honest, it's a very difficult matrix element to evaluate. And to start with something, we have to make some assumption. So, so let us assume that the three and fours has a uh, contact character. Um, Assume that a nucleus A is a double closed nu uh, cold shell nucleus, and the A and B are described by a Hartree-Fock model, and uh, the single particle wave function in A and B are exactly the same, and we neglect the difference in the center of mass positions in A and B, then we can do something. Within this assumption, uh, we obtain that it is possible to use all available uh, direct um, uh, reaction codes. Uh, you only need to modify the overlap integral and that's all. So what is this modif modification this? It's a factor which depends on uh, the uh, distance between a neutron and um, target. And radial depends on, uh, uh, dependence is determined by the difference between the total density of the nucleus A and half the density of neutron density of the same nucleus. So clearly when R goes to infinity, the density is, goes to zero and there is no correction uh, for um, uh, overlap integral at larger distances. However, at small uh, difference, uh, distances, the overlap integral will be modified. And the strength of this modification depends, first of all, on the strengths of the 3N interaction and on the uh, neutron wave function at zero separation between neutron and proton. 
It also depends on the uh, famous D0 constant, which is typical for zero range theorist uh, of DP reactions, which just give you the strengths of the interaction. Yeah, but you can see here that from the, even if you uh, fix the total strength of the three and fours, you can still depend on the, uh, on the uh, due to my function at zero separations. And this value is really very strongly model dependent. To give you an idea, I just uh, collect in a table the value of this uh, due to wave function at zero for a set of different nuclear-nuclear um, -nuclear models. You can see, for example, that um, uh, for cd bone this in, uh, value of the d wave function is almost four times uh, uh, stronger than for argon-18. And here, uh, there are a choice of the uh, several versions of the chiral AFT uh, model at and Fuelo with five different uh, regulators. And we see that if we even don't know what the sign of this uh, wave function is, it can be either positive or negative. So what does it tell you that uh, the uh, corrections which arise due to the three nuclear force uh, is extremely model sensitive. And uh, it's, you cannot basically uh, trust even sign of this correction here. So it tells you what we need to go beyond the zero range approximation and to consider uh, some uh, correction to go beyond uh, the, um, to, to introduce some final range. And as soon as you think of final range, the whole matrix elements which arise due to three and four becomes really, really very, very complicated. Uh, the only way uh, you can um, uh, estimate this uh, contribution is to do some assumption about the, uh, the distorted waves, uh, which also present in the um, uh, transition amplitude. Uh, because then it is possible to uh, estimate contribution of the thin force uh, for a finite range. Uh, interaction. So what I do here, I use the hypercentral 3N potential uh, with the range given by hyperradius and some uh, strengths. And uh, I will assume that the volume integral is fixed and I will be uh, changing the strengths, uh, sorry, the radius of this interaction. For deuteron function here, I uh, use uh, deuteron wave function uh, in the chiral AFT at uh, uh, N2LO. So what do we have here in the plane when board approximation for zero range is this black curve. So when I increase, increase the uh, radius interaction, first of all, the cross section increases, then it decreases again. Okay, so, but uh, how does it, it, uh, this contribution depends on the deuteron wave function? It actually depends on the, uh, on the uh, range of the three and fours. For a smaller range, which here uh, is 0.5 for me, uh, I see a huge spread uh, of the cross section depending on the choice of the two body. Uh, uh, model for the uh, deuteron. For larger uh, range, this spread has become smaller, which actually very understandable because when you have the uh, 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 larger range, the overlap of the three and potential with the uh, deuteron wave function probes uh, further away the position of the uh, between neutron and pro proton. Uh, and at larger range, all of the model uh, will give you the same behavior. So this exercise show you one thing that uh, actually the uh, 3N contribution is uh, very sensitive to the short range physics and it can be different. To um, 
access is properly, uh, still a lot of work should be done because here uh, calculating the matrix elements is one story, but then you need to put it somewhere into reaction code and there is no option in any existing reaction code to uh, take this input into account and deal with it. So it means that the new reaction codes should be derived. First of all, new formal expressions should be written and uh, all the programming should be done from scratch. So it's a big job. But what I'll be telling you now that there is second way uh, where this uh, three and force uh, can exercise its influence. And this is related to the weak binding of, uh, of deuteron. Uh, its binding energy is only uh, two MeV, and therefore, it, uh, therefore it can be easily broken up in the uh, process of uh, scattering. So you can have transfer of neutron from the uh, continuum in P states, and uh, usually it is known that the breakup uh, effects are important in the DP reactions. The way they are treated usually is to uh, use the three body model and uh, to um, have a three body Hamiltonian uh, with the pairwise interaction. So you have optical potentials between neutron and proton, uh, sorry, neutron and target, uh, proton and target and some anion interactions. And normally you approximate this three body problem by two body problem, uh, which uses adiabatic potential, which is the adiabatic potential, which is basically the folding uh, between two uh, different wave function, one of which is due wave function and another due to wave function times the interaction potential between um, N and P. So uh, what will happen uh, if we include three and fours, then a uh, qualitatively new uh, term can appear because now the uh, neutron proton can interact with one nucleon in the target via the two and uh, three and fours. And this will add additional term to this adiabatic model. So we have to average the, all the three and interaction between the uh, ground state of the target, uh, yes, and uh, between the deuteron and uh, function and the function phi one, which is actually the first term in the Weinberg expansion uh, used to treat uh, breakup uh, of the deuteron. So, it's the second way uh, uh, where the three and force can exercise influence. And it's much easier to, to investigate um, its contribution than contribution from the uh, three N uh, force, which uh, gives additional term in the uh, transition amplitude. And what we have learned is that it is extremely important to choose the um, three and force, which is consistent with the two body force, which generates this neutral wave function here. So the force which we are using is the uh, one which arises in the chiral AFT at the next to next to leading order. Uh, this particular uh, force has uh, three contribution, two pi in exchange, one pi in exchange plus contact interaction and uh, contact interaction. The strength of the first diagram is determined by the uh, nuclear nuclear scattering and pi scattering observables. But these other two diagrams um, uh, have the strengths given by low energy constants uh, CD and CE, which should be somehow fixed from uh, one or another observables as well. So what we were using, we're using local version of the chiral AFT at um, next to next to leading order uh, from uh, the Joel Lin. Uh, in this paper, the constant has been fitted uh, to describe light nuclei, uh, neutron alpha scattering and neutron matter. And there are four sets of uh, the values for this low energy constants, 
we just number it one, two, three, four, that's all. What they differ with, they differ by the relative contribution between one pi and exchange and contact and contact interaction. Also difference will be within the uh, regulator and the way how you do regularization in the uh, contact uh, interaction. So when we uh, put this uh, strength um, uh, into uh, folding uh, potential, all right, we first of all can make uh, integration over internal refunction of deuteron. And while we do it, uh, we will end up uh, with the folding uh, model of some effective interaction between deuteron and a nucleon in a target. Okay, so uh, here is the result, the relative contribution uh, from uh, different parts of the uh, chiral AFT potential. So we're showing here for set one and set two. The difference is that in first case, uh, the contact interaction is uh, repulsive. In the second case, it is attractive. In first case, the one pi and contact exchange is kind of very weak. In the second case, it's very strong. And the total uh, effective due to um, nuclear potential is very different depending on which set you use. So we have four sets and here is the results for the uh, four uh, uh, total uh, results for effective uh, potential. As you can see, they are all very different indeed. Uh, how do they uh, translate uh, into the uh, deuteron uh, target potential? Here is the example for a deuteron plus calcium 40 interaction. And you can see that you have very large difference in between of them. Uh, and the uh, strongest potential is the set three, which has uh, the strong um, contribution for one pi and contact exchange. And actually, when you look at this number, you, you realize how big they are. Uh, this is almost 37 M MeV, right? And uh, you need to compare it for the typical uh, deuteron uh, target potential, which is an order of 80 to uh, 100 MeV. So it's 30 to 50%. Looks huge. And you can think, when you try to use this to calculate the cross sections, you may have huge contribution. But it's not exactly the case uh, because there is such a thing as um, uh, uh, discrete um, ambiguity of the optical potential, which means that if you have uh, some uh, nice uh, deuteron potential which describes uh, your uh, elastic scattering, you multiply by factor of two and you have still the same cross section. So if you take any optical potential and try just play with it, but if I depths uh, make it higher or bigger, you just realize that the there is no some linear response in the terms of the cross sections. So calculating the cross sections give you the following. Uh, the the, the uh, contribution from the uh, three and fours, uh, of course, will depend on the uh, potential you use, but also depends on the system. For some system like this one, uh, it's where you, we populate the excited state in aluminium 27 uh, via S-wave uh, nuclear transfer. Uh, and the final uh, binding energy is not very strong. Here, the uh, contribution is very small indeed, which is good news for nuclear astrophysics because this is the uh, state um, which is used to determine the population of uh, mirror resonance uh, for reaction aluminum 26 pi gamma. So good news. But for other cases, the contribution can be very strong. Uh, this, perhaps the strongest is uh, this case uh, where we have um, populating the uh, ground state of aluminum 27. 
And there are some experimental data which has been measured here. So you can see that if you don't uh, have any data in the uh, further angles, you basically uh, left up with a huge uncertainties, which is determined by the drain force. Also, expectedly, you can have more contribution from a drain force for higher energies uh, in the small ang uh, angle ranges here. Yeah, and you also uh, have a different contribution from uh, different uh, sets of, of horse. Uh, basically everywhere. So this was, of course, uh, the calculation which, uh, which has been done with the global optical potentials KDL3. But clearly this contribution may uh, depend strongly on which optical potential we choose to describe uh, nuclear and target interaction in this uh, three-body model. Because it's obvious uh, that for uh, the uh, effect of the um, uh, adding some constant term will depend to what we're adding it, and different optical potentials can have different uh, depths and so on. So what I'm showing here uh, is another calculations which now use uh, non-local optical potential, uh, Janine Rico. Uh, this is energy independent optical potential. Yes. So now we have kind of different picture. If for calcium, uh, for calcium, if for um, local potential KDL3, uh, adding uh, three and four resulted either in strong increase of the cross section or in slight decrease here. Here, uh, all the any potential added uh, to uh, the optical potential would be uh, leading to decrease of the uh, cross section. So it's a different effect here. For aluminum 27, we also see different uh, contribution from the three and fours. Okay, but in both of these cases, we were assuming a traditional assumption of the adiabatic model that the optical potential uh, between the nucleon and the target is uh, energy independent. And it has been taken by uh, at the energy of the uh, deuteron uh, taken at uh, half its value and then used as energy independent potential. But in reality, optical potentials are dependent and uh, we don't know how to take this energy dependence into account within the three body system. Uh, there is opportunity to take them into account within the IWA. So the general um, question we have is um, how to treat this optical potential within the three body model. The point is that the target is uh, the very complicated object and we do need to treat everything as a many body system. But we can split uh, this uh, many body wave function into two terms, one of which contains only ground state of the target and the function, which is function of uh, two vector variables between neutron and proton and uh, the target. And the other term, which contains all uh, excitations. If we now follow the Feshbach and try to exclude uh, this term, in other words, if we try to project the uh, many body of wave function to three body model, we find out that it's possible to do and the channel function will uh, also be found within the three uh, body model, but with potential de determined by the optical operator, which has a very complicated term. It will has, uh, have the terms which contains interactions of neutron with the target only or proton with the target only. And it will contain the terms which contains, first of all, uh, interactions with neutrons uh, and neutrons of the target. Then you have some excitations, and these excitations are propagated to protons. So you have neutron and proton 
are interacting via exact states uh, of the target. So uh, this will create some induced three body force in the three body system. So how to deal with it? Uh, it is possible to deal with it within the, the, uh, within the adiabatic model because then it is possible to show that uh, averaging via the Deuteron wave function within the first uh, Weinberg state leads to expression of the uh, potential, channel potential, which is exactly the same as uh, expression for the uh, st standard neutron optical potentials, but taken at a different effective energy. And this effective energy is just half the Newton energy plus some shift, which is determined by the kinetic energy of the uh, neutron and proton within the range of the uh, short range of the uh, NP force. Right, but there is still um, the contribution from um, multiple scattering. And luckily within the adiabatic model, it is possible to take the main contribution from the uh, next term and the leading order into account. And when you do it, uh, you can obtain within the approximation made uh, within the adiabatic model, the uh, taking into account the next uh, uh, terms results in just doubling the dynamical part of the optical potential. So that's what we're uh, doing now. We are using non-local uh, dispersive optical body potential and we add three and force to it. So here are the results for calcium 40 uh, for two uh, different energies, for lower energies and 56 MeV. So once again, we see here that the adding uh, three and force uh, change significantly uh, the cross sections. But when we add this induced three body mole, uh, induced three body force, which in fact is just doubling the uh, dynamical part of the non local DOM, uh, then we see that uh, the sensitivity to contribution from the three and force uh, decreases a lot. And it, this actually is understandable uh, because, uh, because when you increase the absorption of the system, you are less sensitive to the changes to the real part. Okay, so this is good, but this results have been, has been obtained uh, within the uh, adiabatic model. And uh, adiabatic model does take a uh, break up into account, but not completely. The point is that uh, if you have local potentials that uh, then adiabatic model is a reasonably good approximation to take the cup into account. But once you go to non-local potentials, then uh, adiabatic model is uh, not a very good approximation. You can expect stronger deviations and ideally you need to do it, uh, to do the same calculation beyond adiabatic uh, potential using the local potentials. But at the moment, there is no such tool to do it. So that's why let us try to think uh, about uh, going beyond a diabetic approximation, but only for local potentials. The obvious way to go beyond the adiabatic approximation uh, would be to use CDCC and it would be re uh, relatively straightforward uh, to take uh, the three and force into account there. Uh, but first step of, of expanding wave function into continuum this desired carbon channel is to uh, keep only first term of expansion and it will give us uh, this old Watanabe model. So in Watanabe model, once again, you assume that uh, we have three body Hamiltonian uh, and uh, the three body nature of the uh, problem is taken into account, but without any breakup at all. 
The interactions here uh, are the same. Uh, the only difference uh, with respect to adiabatic is that we now have Jutland function both in the bra and cat vectors everywhere. So here are results for the uh, DP reactions in the Watanabe model. Now, what is shown here is uh, the case without uh, any three and fours. And uh, the case with the, uh, uh, including the three and fours within the chiral AFT theory at two and a law, uh, shown for set three. For some reason, for all other sets, the contribution from the enforce is close to zero because there are some consolations between a two pine exchange uh, term and uh, contact interaction. It's the only uh, set three which has a strong contribution from one pine exchange and contact, uh, which uh, gives noticeable contribution to DP reactions as well. For example, uh, here for a uh, larger energy, you see it just completely uh, changes the shape of the cross sections. We also have shown uh, the, uh, the contribution of, of the three and fours in a different uh, model, which is argon 18 potentials and the corresponding Urbana 9 uh, contribution from the three and fours. And this contribution has just simply different sign to this one. So as a result, it just acts different direction for calcium, for aluminum. Here, the result is completely different in terms of the angle distribution. And once again, for the case of aluminum uh, 26 dp populating excited state, uh, which is S wave state, uh, the, there's very little contribution from the three and fours, um, which is actually good news for astrophysics again. Of course, now the, um, uh, the, uh, our ambition is to go beyond this Watanabe approximation and uh, start uh, using uh, CDCC with the three and fours. Now, this is currently the work which is in progress. Uh, it is uh, done in collaboration with uh, Mario Gomez and Laura Maschini from Sari. What we will be using here is uh, the Argon V18 potentials and Urbana 8, just because it's simpler. And we're at the stage when we have calculated uh, the, some diagonal couplings and non-diagonal couplings. Uh, here I show you one uh, example. Uh, this is the calculation black line, dashed line, is calculations without three and fours. With three and fours, the potential become shallower. Uh, this is also diagonal uh, contribution uh, couplings between bin states. Here, the uh, contribution from the three and fours, it's smaller. And this is very understandable. This is what you would expect, because when we have some continuum beam, it stretches out uh, much stronger than the Deuteron ground state wave function, but it still has the same normalization, it's normalized to one. Therefore, the wave function of the beam within the area where it overlaps with the three and fours is smaller, so you should have smaller contribution. Uh, and for non diagonal couplings, I have shown you uh, some two examples because here you have a lot of um, many diagonal, uh, non-diagonal couplings will be uh, equal to zero just because the selection rules. Uh, those one on zero shown here, there are two cases. This green one is the, um, the, the non-diagonal coupling uh, between the ground state and one of the bin state. Uh, so including the three and fours uh, make it slightly stronger. In this case, uh, where the coupling between two bin states, including the uh, three and fours makes it uh, slightly weaker. So uh, we haven't yet calculated the CDCC uh, reactions with, for uh, DP, but we are working towards this and 
uh, watch the space. Hopefully it will be done relatively soon. So the conclusion of my talk is that there is a new uh, uncertainty, modal uncertainty, which affects the cross-sections of DP reactions. And there are two sources of these uncertainties uh, for this contribution. One of which is the correction to the DP amplitude and another is correction to the nucleon plus proton plus alpha interact well, plus target interaction uh, potential. So both these contributions are very sensitive to the Schon trait physics, and it is crucial to use uh, three and force, which is consistent with the two and force, uh, which determines the nucleon proton observables. Uh, in both these cases, uh, the contribution of 3N4 is very sensitive to the 2N plus 3N model. Potentially, this 3N contribution can be noticeable, but it will depend on the choice of reactant system of uh, de uh, deuteron incident energy. Uh, it depends on whether your final state is strongly bound or weakly bound. And it also depends on the orbital momentum of the transferred neutron. It also may uh, depend on the choice of the optical potentials and whether you include uh, other effects such as uh, induced the body effects. So basically these are new questions and to take them into account uh, will be really interesting to see uh, what it will do for uh, uncertainties of uh, uh, in predicted uh, cross-section of DP reactions. So thank you for your attention.